Okay, so here we are back with the, how do we get the crashed R3 back on the racetrack without replacing all the bodywork, right? Just hard to get things done right now with all the COVID-19 related delays. Those delays caught me and I couldn't get all the parts that I needed vis-a-vis -vis that windscreen to get this bike ready and shoot the video before Nelson. So I was able to get the bike all done and ready so the kid could ride it. We showed up on Thursday night. We had a practice day on Friday with lean track days. My friend Sam Wang there, they did a great job. It was a great day of practice. Unfortunately, in the second session in the advanced group, Max got cleaned out in the kink. Another rider apparently struggled judging his closing speed because when you're on these 300s, I think his top speed there is maybe 110. The kink at Nelson's, if you've ever ridden there, your speed on a 600 or 1,000 is gonna be a lot faster than that. This is Max's left clip on two. He got hit so hard in the bar that it folded this down, and you can see the marks here on the body work here and here. This was pushed down on contact. Max went into a pretty wicked tank slapper. My buddy Mike Davis actually saw it, he had a good vantage point. Max went into a wicked tank slapper and crashed at just a little over 100 miles an hour. So we had a little more damage to the bike, okay? I was able to get the motorcycle repaired at Nelson's and the kid raced it all day Saturday, got a couple of wins, had some really good results and had a lot of fun. So we were fortunate that we had enough spare parts to be able to do that. And thankfully the bike once again crashed pretty well. We had some rear set damage that I had to fix. I had all those Vortex parts there. And with that Vortex V3 kit, they do a great job. So easy to repair those things fast. Track side, as long as you have just a couple of the spares that you need, the foot pegs and like maybe the brackets, right? It was awesome, got the kid back out on track, but we still wanna circle back and just show you some of the things that we did to the bike to salvage some of these parts, because let's be honest, this shit gets really expensive, especially when you start falling down. Max is at that point where he's learning how to go fast. He's a fast rider at this point, expert racer. And you have to find and sometimes cross those limits, right, to really truly understand where they're at. And that's just where we are and I accept that. So we're not gonna make his bike perfect after every fall. He needs to show me a couple of weekends strung together without any issue before I put the new body work that's at the painter on the bike. This is the tank cover that was on the bike from the barber crash. This was broken here, basically all the way up. This tab here was broken off. This tab here and this button both snapped off. Crack here, this tab here also broken off. So this was really damaged. You can see we're missing a couple of tabs here, attachment points. And I'll show you in a second how I dealt with that. How I fixed this was I started off by plastic welding it using a butane powered soldering iron, essentially just melting the plastic back together, okay? I then followed up, this is some JB Weld plastic repair. I put just a layer of that on top of the repair that I made. This held out for the entire Nelson ledges race weekend. We had three days of riding and there was another crash on it. So I would say that was a good repair. The end result, is it gorgeous? No, it's not gorgeous. But like I said, we're just trying to get the bike to a good rideable spot so Max can continue to ride this bike. The tail section, we showed you some of the repairs we made there. Okay, this piece was missing. This all through here was gone. I re-glassed that, cut that out, put a new deuce fastener in there. Had to make a repair here. This was basically almost broken off. Okay, and this was falling on again and it held up, didn't need any further repair. So I was able to, for zero dollars, minus just a little bit of fiberglass work, and Caleb's gonna show you some of that as much as makes sense. I was able to salvage this tail section. The cover for this tail section was beat up a little bit too. Right, it was broken over in here, broken over in here. I got a layer of fiberglass in there. And once again, this all survived the crash.
In advance of installing this tank cover, I'm gonna feed this safety wire through and we'll show you the purpose behind that. Once I get this reinstalled, you know, but you, you do wanna have this held on there securely. The rider's gonna use it you know, as an anchor point, of course, for their body, right? So you want it held on firmly. Okay, now let's go ahead and slide this in. Something I do like to do is I put just a little bit of lubrication. It's just a little silicone on those bad boys right there. You know what, it just helps them kind of dive over a little bit easier. Okay, so kind of get that whole thing to go forward like so. You wanna make sure that these top hats that are on the backside of these grommets don't get pushed out. Look at that, a little bit of lube, bam, it goes right in. Okay, where this install looks different from just your complete factory, you know, I'm still in one piece tank cover is gonna be over here on the left side of the bike, the clutch side, where obviously that just all got crushed. Okay, now I'll show you what we're gonna do with the safety wire here. We're gonna grab a hold of this stuff, okay? And we're gonna twist it up right here. And all, all that we need to really do at the end of the day is we need to make sure that it's just not gonna allow this to just pop off, okay? That's really all I'm looking to do here. Not really so much pulling down really hard on it because you don't want to stress that wire out too much by over twisting it, but just enough that I can lift up on it like that and clearly it's captured, okay? The last thing you'd want to have is the kids out there ripping around and the damn tank cover's falling off the bike, okay? So when I looked at this, I'm like, yeah, this would be a pretty simple solution to the challenge that we're faced with here. So just kind of wind that up. It's the same concept back here. Don't really want to overdo it, but just enough that it's got it kind of captured there. And then of course we have the fasteners or on the other side. So this is not beautiful, but that's fully functional and proven already to have held up, you know, over multiple races. Okay, there you have it. The R3 is all back together and it is totally race ready, okay? He rode the bike at Nelson's, even after the crash at Nelson's, and the bike was good, handled great. Got a little bit of maintenance to do before we head to Grattan with Sport Bike Track Time this weekend. And if we're taking pictures from the right side, she looks pretty good. If you're taking pictures from the left side, let's just hope the photographer's at least 30 feet away. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments section of this video. This is, I think, kind of a cool little mashup of, you know, you get a bike and that crash looked pretty bad at Barbara. It was a pretty good crash. The bike took a nice tumble. It did some significant damage. That subframe is part of the frame on the R3 and that was damaged big time and I showed how I was able to fix that without further damaging it by using a torch, right? Steel frame, just heat that up and bend it around. I think the fiberglass repair is really relevant too, as well as welding that plastic tank cover back together. These are some tips that I think you all can utilize to get your bike back on the track without having to spend $2,000.